Hey guys, welcome to another episode of H2O. What an exciting day. What's going on there, Mario? Hey, what's going on, brother? I'm uh, I'm super excited about this show today. So this this is, I think, uh, one that's uh, that's going to be very very interesting. I agree. You know, I missed you on the last show. You know, we had uh, we had we had quite a bit of uh, feedback and as well as support of our last video. Um, so we definitely have to thank our viewers for that. So I really do. No, appreciate absolutely that. incredible. And and yeah, sorry I missed it. It was actually really interesting for me too. You know, because I had uh, I had some issues myself with that type of company that, that we're talking about. So yeah. I, I I definitely see what uh, why viewers would like it and and why they really were interested in, in talking about it. You know, yeah, so. you know, but I missed you though. <laughs> Me too, brother. Uh, Me but too. it was definitely interesting because Pasha really did bring it out. So I, I was so excited from the outpour of uh, support um, because obviously this is an issue a very um, sensitive issue for many people in the industry, which was great. So, but, um, it was, we had such a good, so much support that I had to bring back again, the man, mm -hmm. Mr. Pasha Proviv. How are you doing, Sash? Awesome. How are you? <laughs> good. Thank you so much for joining us. And Hey, what a great turnout it was to the last video. Thank you. That content was excellent and the viewers absolutely loved it. We really appreciate it. Thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, we we ex we are awaiting your comments and some feedback as well. Yep. And now also, what's really interesting was we left off on our last um, on our last I guess post. Um, we talked about blockchain, right? So that's something that's really important for people to understand what blockchain is. But before we before we start with this conversation, I want to bring in someone that is really important. Um, for this for this show because they're actually really living it and inside of this whole new crypto blockchain world um i want you all guys to welcome uh sal here we go muhammad he is a uh smart a former uh coin smart uh employee he is uh, currently now the cto for uh go gig he has also studied um biochemical engineering and at harvard and as well as designed a cryptocurrency asset platform um, from the ground up. So if anybody knows anything about blockchain and crypto, it would be our gentleman here, Big Ol' Sal. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me on. No, thank you. I really do appreciate you coming on and, and really discussing this. So, so let's jump right into this, right? So obviously, I believe that blockchain is something that is going to be a very useful tool. But now let's first discuss what is blockchain and now and, and what does it actually do? Pasha, you I, I think this was actually tossed on your end. What do you think? So blockchain from from its name, you can ensure it's a chain of blocks. Uh, those are not real blocks. Those are digital blocks that live in a computer system, in a network or on a hard drive. And uh, I'm going to use physical example. Right. You have a block A and block B. And uh, they are linked together, and that's what makes it a chain. And the chain uh, keeps growing and growing and growing in, indefinitely. But the link between them is that block A in itself contains a hash, which is a um, succinct form of block B. So if you try to break, break this chain and remove a block, you will immediately see that this chain has been altered. So uh, their link in between two blocks uh, allows you to maintain the integrity of the chain. Because if one, uh, one block is taken out, uh, everybody can see that. And by default, blockchain is a completely transparent system where you can see uh, all the different blocks when they were created and any information uh, attached to them. So that's kind of the basic explanation. Okay, so just from your explanation alone, what you're telling me is that blockchain is kind of like dominoes. Everything goes together. If one gets removed, you will see that completely, correct? Everything is broken, yes. Everything is broken. Okay, yeah. so transparency is really, I mean, it, it's it's 100% transparency. So, yep. so, why would, so my question to you is, I know that you don't believe that blockchain belongs in the logistics field, but 
But isn't transparency very important on the side of the financial world, even with logistics? So why would blockchain not be good for logistics? Yeah, we, we will have to go deep into the use case, right? Okay. Uh, because blockchain first. by itself is a financial system. By itself, it's automatically a financial system. Right. Uh, but when you when you tie it to the world of logistics, it doesn't automatically become. Uh, it wasn't made for logistics. Let's say so that it it will become dependent on other things and other events, and in the way how it's dependent makes it uh, questionable in in its use. But, but on a blockchain, and now Sal, let me, let me ask this one, this direction's to you. On If you create blockchain, can I create, like, let's say my own currency on my blockchain so that anyone that does business on my blockchain could pay with my currency? Is that something that is, is that how you see it or am I seeing it incorrectly? That is completely correct. And uh, that is, you know, when you start, you know, diving more deeper into the capacities that blockchain technology has. And one of them is uh, most definitely cryptocurrencies. And, and, and that's where blockchain has many different uses. Currencies are just one of them. Yeah. And just to jump in on that very quick, I think, especially on the logistics field, I think it's not going to be payments that's going to come first. I think it's going to be other things uh, within the blockchain that's going to be utilized. You know, for me, it would be, you know, a bill of lading release or a shipment release and so on to maybe, you know, one day completely remove bill of ladings out of the equation where it would be rather be a, a blockchain release, if you will. You know, and if some of these things are not matching, that is when, you know, shipments won't get released. That's how I would envision it, at least. But Mario, do you do you see then blockchain actually then resolving this whole kind of going paperless also? Because now there is a place where you can put the documents, it's safe and they cannot be altered or touched. Yeah. And and I mean there's a few companies already out there that's kind of experimenting with this. You know, the, the, I think the biggest problem is that we don't have scale at this, right? There that you need you need to you need to sign up with a third party in order to, let's say, have a, a digital version of a bill of lading, right? There's a there's a company, and we can try to get them on our show next time. I'm sure they would love to be on our show. Um, you know, a company called WaveBL. And, and, and they're actually using blockchain technology for original bill of lading releases, you know, where in the past, there needs to be an original be presented to a bank or an original being presented at destination. Now they're basically going through their system is going through blockchain technology and they're basically signing up a bunch of carriers. The thing what I don't like with it, it's still a third party that's still going to charge you a fee to do that. You know, where I feel like it should be, that's something where all the carriers I need to come together and saying, hey, let's invest in this technology together and let's do it together. But I think it's going to be really challenging because I think Maersk, for example, will use it as a competitive advantage over others, you know? Absolutely. And, and not only Merce, but CMA is actually doing it now, too. Yeah, correct. Uh, but, they, but the problem is they're all going to come up with their own system of it. Right. You know? I think it would be awesome, uh, kind of like what Cell is referring to, it, to, to have something that is really, you know, you know, like a Bitcoin. You know, it's completely independent. You know, yeah, somebody invented it and somebody started it, but there's nobody, you know, getting rich of that, so to speak. Right. And that's just the problem that I have with all these you know, some of these technology companies saying, hey, we created, we're creating a blockchain technology for the logistics industry. Yep. But all what they're trying to do is make money of it when blockchain itself and, and especially cryptocurrency. The, the biggest thing for me, at least, is independence and not being tied to a company or a country. Right. right. Uh, you know, and that, that's that's the problem that I see with this. Isn't Maersk running on trade lands, both of them, CMA and Maersk running on IBM's trade lands uh, blockchain platform? I do believe so. I, I did. I, I did see that. Yes, I did. Yeah. So yeah. it's a technology built by IBM, which obviously it you know they're a technology company, so they're trying to build new products, and they claim that it's uh, it's independent of any particular uh, steamship line or uh, country. Um, so that that's definitely a benefit, um, and it runs on blockchain. So that. That's what I know about trade lens. <laughs> but, yeah, but I think trade lens, that's correct. But I think that 
I think carriers are going to try to white label this for their own internal use. And, and I have no idea how that's going to work out. To yeah, the only way they could use it is to to become part of it, right? Be yeah. You know, become part of that ecosystem that, you know, that is running behind. But, um, but so Pasha, I, I, yeah, not to interrupt, but but you but you think and you really you we, we've had this discussion before, but mm -hmm. you don't think that blockchain is, is really a good fit. For, for let's say the logistics world, I think it's not necessary. You could just accomplish all the benefits that TradeLens offers right now with a simple computer system. It doesn't have to run on a blockchain. Yeah, but on a blockchain, and Sal, you could correct me if I'm mistaken. You can actually create your own world on your blockchain. So whatever it is that you want, whether it's a currency or a, a certain type of rule that you have running on that blockchain, I mean that's your world. And from what I'm looking at is a lot of these companies are really want kind of a smooth transition through transportation in, or through in logistics. So if they keep adding, like you said, people into their ecosystems, which ecosystems are the most important things for a survival of blockchain, why can't, why can't we use that now? Like why do, do you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's such a useful tool. I mean, Sal, I mean, do you, what is your thought about it? I mean, do you think blockchain could, could be really important nowadays with, the shipping of goods and transferring of money from country to country without holding anything back or well it's a step by step process right i mean with every with the dawn of every new technology um you have you know phases where that technology progresses through and some people adopt it some people don't adopt it and then it goes to a different phase where more people start to adopt it still some people are waiting to adopt it and then it starts to, you know, eventually, you know, new technology eventually reaches, you know, peak maturity where people are really confident in this stuff. So with blockchain, where essentially, you know, where it started out with just Bitcoin and then, you know, that's layer one, then people are like, oh, we really need smart contracts. And then, you know, came out Ethereum, that's layer two. And then on top of smart contracts, you know, or aside from it, you know, you could do uh, DeFi apps or NFTs and, and so on and so forth. And it's just, it's just a matter of getting ahead of things. It's going to happen. I mean, it's, it's, it's the future financial system. Uh, there's really no stopping it. Um, it it's, it's, it's going to definitely provide a smoother and uh, a smoother experience for our entire species to interact with each other on a financial level right tell us about nfts what is well, NFT? so the definition of an nft is a non-fungible token basically what that means is that you can have essentially any digital asset um on the blockchain and have a way of verifying it to verify that this essentially belongs to you, right? And then that at that specific asset that you own can then uh, obviously be traded on the blockchain or exchange for a currency, or for so on and so forth. So you could see people already taking through doing this in art, doing this with databases, doing this with other documents and so on, or doing this with songs so on and so forth. And it that basically in the old days, you know, when you used to put out, you know, a, say, say, say a new MP3 track and you, you wouldn't really know who the original owner of that track was. Uh, it's all self-proclaimed, right? I mean, if, if you're the first one to release it and everybody knows that you're the one to release it, then it belongs to you on the blockchain. It's all verifiable because of its transparent nature is every action on a blockchain is immutable so you can always go back in time and see who created what and who who traded what and who did what see the, to me that's incredible i mean literally i mean i, I guess a, a better way of saying blockchain is creating your own little planet for your own business or your own company would you agree i mean that where you can govern and do anything you want on there with respect to what you require from your customers or whatever it is. Would you would you agree with that? Yep, pretty much. 
Okay, so let's get into something also um, that is is you know starting to come over. Okay, and that is the the world of crypto into logistics because that also really goes into blockchain because that's how you. I mean, when people hear blockchain, do they kind of relate that to crypto as well? Uh, blockchain is the base, right? And then crypto is right. built on top of the blockchain, so it's like it's the uh, currency in the. Right. It's the currency that you could build on that blockchain, correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, some of the challenges that Pasha was saying with cryptocurrency, because on the last video he was taken, he was taken back. He was lost for words. Because crypto is a um, it's non-regulated, right? It's in a decentralized market. There is no governing body regulating this, right? Sal? Is that correct? Yeah. It's, it's, it's non-regulated. Um, it's just defined by rules that are transparent to everybody that takes part in the ecosystem. That's correct. If okay. you're trying now, to, thinks I'm absolutely crazy. Here we go. If go you're ahead, trying Pasha. to issue a new crypto and sell it to United States customers, uh, it's classified as security by Securities and Exchange Commission. And secure, okay. if you're selling a security like a stock or a bond to U.S. consumers, you have to comply with very strict regulations. You have to have financial audits. You have to uh, po post a bond before before the issuing. And that wasn't the case for a while, like four years ago when the crypto hype is started. There was no regulation. The SEC didn't really know what crypto was. So there was all these ICOs starting and, you know, tokens being issued. But then uh, SEC caught up to it and, you know, closed most of them. So, you, you know, you can see the recent attempts by Telegram founder to issue an international token mm -hmm. has, has not succeeded because he didn't reach an agreement with SEC. And then uh, in addition to that, even bigger and more ambitious attempt, uh, Facebook CEO's Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg's Libra, which was a very sound idea, uh, yeah. you know, out of uh, Switzerland, they wanted to, to build um, this cryptocurrency called Libra, and they had uh, companies willing to accept it. They had, you know, a lot of companies, including MasterCard and Visa, on board, and uh, it, it's, it was, a, you know, it was a very ambitious idea, maybe too ambitious for current time. So because uh, government is one thing, but there are also issues that need to be addressed. You know, a lot of crypto is now being stolen from exchanges because people who are running those exchanges, they haven't been in the financial world for long enough, right? They, they haven't built their experience in uh, financial transactions and, you know, managing the risk. Um, you know, it's usually people who are hyped up about crypto, they, you know, they jump into crypto world, issue their own tokens, and then uh, have unexpected consequences. So, but, there, but Pasha, there are some tokens, and, and Sal, maybe you can help me if it's an L2 or an L3, that are, are specifically um, in certain areas in logistics today, like VeChain, right? Um, VeChain, I believe, is a logistical token. Yeah, it's a logistical token that's an L3. And it's an L3. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I personally, you know, I own VeChain. I think it's going to be something that is going to be huge um, soon because I really do believe. Now, the one thing that people need to understand is the world of crypto, like South said, is it's really based on the networks. It's, the, um, it's how the ecosystems build. But I really believe that there is going to be this new parallel world. Um, where crypto is going to be um, is going to be a norm um, because it's just the way the world turns. Um, and you see that all these big um, companies are really starting to push. Sal, do you think it's just a question of time before so many people push where they have to figure something out? Because, I mean, it's not going away. Like the Bitcoins and the Ethereums, they're not going away. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I think it's just a matter of time before you know, we start seeing, ex you know, extreme levels of adoption into this technology. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you can create all the rules that you want, but people are going to do what actually makes a, cha a difference in their life and what makes their life better, what makes their life easier, right. uh, what makes their life more efficient and ultimately more effective. And they see results on this side 
you know, the grass is green on this side. It's not really that green for me on the other side. People are going to go where the grass is greener. I mean, it's just a matter of time, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's just kind of the way the uh, human nature works. I mean, if they don't like it in some part, you know, they can only stand it for so long before they go to, you know, the sunny side and they don't, you know, they don't want it. They don't right. want to be on the rainy, rainy side anymore. Right. So that's, that's, that's the way I understand, you know, the adoption uh, metrics and the adoption curve for cryptocurrency is it's something that's not just going to affect logistics. It's going to affect everything. And I agree. It's going to be a big, a big well, part of it. Yeah. And, and especially I, I know a lot of people think about, you know, stuff here in the United States. You know, but think about countries that have very unstable currencies, right? And and obviously in the logistics business, you know, we ship into these countries that that, that have very unstable currencies, right? And and I, and I forgot if it was uh, it was one South American country. I think it was Chile or Peru. I, I'm not quite quite 100 percent sure on that. That said, hey, we we accepting you know cryptocurrency in everywhere now. You know, El Salvador. El Salvador, El Salvador yeah. Th yeah, th thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's El Salvador who said, you know, who had troubles with their currencies and now basically just said, hey, we're going to accept this everywhere. And and I think you're going to have other country, especially, you know, East and West Africa, who's going to go there as well. And, and one of our good clients, um, it's actually a really good, interesting uh, kind of case study for them, was they built these small portable energy units you know where you can burn anything you want in them and and it's kind of like a small generator it's the size of a half container roughly and and you can burn anything and it will burn it clean and will create your energy right and uh and their biggest problem was how to get paid for the energy right and and so they basically they started with bitcoin i think now they have a couple other ones you know but they're basically saying okay you know what is a currency that's kind of globally accepted you know and and that's why they said, hey, you know, people can now, you know, charge their, you know, generator batteries and, and so on and so forth all and pay all via Bitcoin, you know, because I think there's really what what the what the world is missing is like almost like a global currency. You know, you kind of have the similar thing with the euro in, in Europe, you know, where now you can go in any country pretty much and, and ha use the same money. But I think something like this, our our world is going to globalize more. You know, it's gonna, the world is going to get smaller in that sense. And I think that's just why the world needs somewhat of a global currency. Let me ask you guys, let me ask you guys a question just to all three of you. Do you think that some of these ocean carriers that are now coming into supply chain or that are getting into all aspects of supply chain, anything from customs clearance to brokerage to final mile, do you see them actually creating their own currency for other worlds or uh, another other worlds, other countries. And the reason I say that is, is Mario, you brought an important, an important point. And that is that, you know, when, when we think of this and especially because our audience is in the United States, there is a lot more, what, 270 something other countries um, that we have to talk about. And you're right. Um, you know, we, I've, I've been at tons of meetings at, at, with these forwarders and, and, and manufacturers where they won't ship to certain countries because they don't even know if they're going to get paid. Venezuela is one of them. You don't know if you're ever going to get paid in Venezuela. I mean, their money goes up, what, inflation's at 8,000 percent? So, you know, I think that the lines are getting smart. I think they're building these blockchains so that they can, like you said, Mario, work more and have a consistent or more confidence to doing trade into countries that can't pay because now they will have this cryptocurrency to pay with. So this, this is all exciting stuff. I, I really do. Um, I really think that that's, that's really the next step. So, so Pasha, you, your opinion, let, let's, let's, let's wrap this up. So your opinion, blockchain and crypto in logistics, you think blockchain is okay, but not necessary and crypto don't even think about it. Right. Uh, I don't think people are ready for uh, to transfer from um, to make the change right now. Maybe in the future. Okay, fair. Is that based just because of fear? They don't. They don't. It's the unknown. It's it, uh, a lot of different little things have to happen. I think NFT market will help. Will help uh, people understand what blockchain is and transition public opinion to. Uh, understand blockchain also the frequency of uh, 
of uh, negative events that occur with crypto exchanges, uh, they have to stop first. We, we shouldn't hear on the news that, you know, the crypto was stolen or that DeFi uh, ecosystem, somebody stole six, $600 million worth of uh, crypto. Once we stop hearing those news and we perceive blockchain or and crypto as a very safe uh, method uh, of exchanging money, um, and we also have the growth of NFT tokens, then it will facilitate the transition uh, into crypto. So if, if you had to make just a guess, just a, not going to hold your feet to the fire, but if you had to guess, how long do you think until the crypto world comes into logistics? You could say never. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I would think that crypto world will come into commercial banking at some point, right? They, they're they making experiments in the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston right now uh, with, you know, potentially running with a digital dollar instead of a regular dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, so that it should revolutionize commercial banking first, and that could happen anywhere in the, in the next 30 years. And then after that, um, you know, it could be used in other areas. Okay, so not a bad, not a bad fit, 30 years. I'm glad you're... You play it safe. How about you, Sal? I mean... You're my visionary, Sal. The way, well, the way I see it is that, you know, there's a gold mine. And the first one to the gold is probably going to get most of the gold. So don't be afraid to venture out into the dark and get yourself some gold. And now, and now just to, I, I completely agree with you. And um, just what Sal was saying, guys, we are not financial advisors. We don't give out any financial advice. This is purely for entertainment purposes only. But I will agree with Sal. Sal, I think that this world of crypto is also a good opportunity for people to actually better their lives if they really understand and know it. And hopefully maybe you and I can have a call, uh, have a, have a, a Zoom um, or a we could have a show where we discuss the intricacies of crypto and how that works to help some of our viewers that are interested in possibly looking at other avenues of helping out and possibly changing their lives. Now, the good thing that I heard about crypto as well is that if you do make millions and millions of dollars in crypto, you can actually move to San Juan, Puerto Rico, and you do not get charged the capital gains tax. So I can see the population of Puerto Rico going up soon. When are we moving? Anyway, so anything else, Al? Um, No, that is it. All right. Thank you so much. All right, Mario. So yeah, I think that uh, out of all of us, I mean, you are, you know, your company is a tech company. You've got a lot of that tech. Um, I think that if anyone is going to be seeing this um, sooner than anyone, it would be uh, yourself, companies like yourself. Yeah, I, I think there's the, so, so to answer your question from earlier, I don't foresee any of the ocean carrier getting into, you know, doing their own currencies. I, I, I don't, I Fair. don't, or their own coin. I, I don't, I don't, I don't personally see this. I think the biggest problem is the, the volatility of the, of the coins right now, right? Because if you, if you're getting paid today and let's say in Bitcoin and it lost, you know, seven, eight or nine percent over a, you know, a week, right? It, obviously it can go the other way too. You know, I'm I'm an investor myself in in, in cryptocurrencies, but um, I think the problem is until this is not really streamlined, where you don't have these crazy swings, where it's similar to a regular currencies, where it moves up, you know, a half percent up and down type of situation. I think until then it's going to be tough to accept payments for that. But blockchain, I think, will definitely. I think we're going to see it in the next five years in uh, in the logistics field. Uh, and I think the first, if I have to forecast what's going to happen first, would be, you know, bill of lading and documentation and contract exchanges, I think will be the first thing that that would 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 come out of that. Uh, you know, Mario, I, I'm going to have to agree with you because um, with, uh, with the e-bill, uh, with all these new things that we're trying to make paperless, it just makes all the sense in the world. And also we know how important documentation is in our industry. One yeah. mistake can cost you hundreds and thousands of dollars in fines, if not even lose your company. It, it gets bad. So you yeah, well, sure. especially on the on the bill of lading side. I mean, my company has been running paperless for five, four years now, right? I yeah. mean, the only thing that we actually have to do is we have to print 
uh, original bill of lightings. You know, yeah. that's the last piece that is that is non digitalized for us today. You know, yeah. and, and and it's surprising to me that that there's not a bigger push for that, especially. And I think COVID has accelerated that because a lot of people are now working from home. You know, there's not people in the offices as much anymore. I know a lot of my customers switched over to Seaway builds. You know, but if we can figure out or, or figure out a good solution for letter of credits and a good solution for original bill of ladings. I think that's the next, you know, unicorn billion dollar idea in our industry. I think it's not automate processes. For me, it's it's solving that problem. Yeah, that's that's some really good information to have. Um, my opinion, Sal, baby, I'm bullish, baby. I'm bullish all the way. <laughs> I think that it's going to be sooner than five years. I think that Maersk and these steamship lines are preparing um, to really start better, uh, you know, making, uh, you know, creating better relationships with countries with this blockchain, with creating their currency. I do believe there will be like a Maersk coin or there will be something to that extent. I'm a visionary. I believe it. Um, and just and just for this episode alone, Sal, I wore this just for you uh, because I am a believer. I, I do believe that no. it's a good opportunity for people to really learn and understand because the world of technology is here um, and it's scary. I um, mean, if people haven't looked into it, now is a good time for you to start really, really delving into um, this world of blockchain and crypto. So thank you so much, everyone. This was an amazing, amazing, amazing show. And again, thank you so much. I know you guys are down um, at the Air Cargo Show. Cry, P uh, Pasha, are you down there? Yep. Okay. Have a great time. Send my best to everyone. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And we will thank see you guys. you guys again next week. Anything else you guys want to say before we log off? Um, if you need help with any blockchain related stuff, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, you can find a link from Michael. <laughs> Absolutely. And Pasha, anything you want to say? You got that smile, Pasha. I love the smile. It's that smirk. Um, well, I, I wish, you know, I, I wish that, you know, even though I believe blockchain is not necessary, I think that, you know, being part of the same ecosystem, which could be blockchain, could be something else, which is what Trade Lens is effectively doing. IBM Trade Lens is, is putting a lot of different players on their same system, same computer system. This is a great trend. There we go. And Mario, you need a talk, baby. Yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm always excited when there is uh, things happening in the logistics field. And, and like I said before, I, I, I think there's a lot of things that are going to happen. So I'm excited. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time. Guys, safe travels wherever you're going to. Be well and we'll connect next time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you.